Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Episode or session or recording 251. Can't believe I'm still doing them. I mean, it's not its not a surprise that I'm still doing something because I've been doing this stuff since 2006, making podcasts and videos and stuff. But, but to stick to kind of one podcast, one, not even one topic because... It's not really a topic, is it? Well, it is. It's like sleep. Or being boring. Can being boring be a topic? I don't know. I think what surprises some people, because I think some people, they like... Oh, my squeaky chair. They might like the sound of my voice and... Maybe, you know, like listening to my stuff and and perhaps want to contact me, but not realising that I really am this boring. It's not an act. I really <laughs> I am this. I'm, in fact, I'm probably more boring than I am when I do these recordings. If you think that could even be possible. Really, I mean... It's... it's, I realised years ago... Years and years and years ago... That... The only thing I want to talk about is me. And what I'm interested in. I've got practically no interest in other people. And it's not not like in a rude way. I'm just genuinely not interested in other people. It's a weird one, isn't it? And I've I tried to kind of figure out is it some kind of psychological Disorder is it part of the bipolar, the personality disorder, or whatever? But I think I'm just generally not really interested in other people on a kind of trivial or just a general way. If I'm able to help somebody, then they grab my interest. Like if a neighbour locks himself out of their house. I'll do everything I can to help them get back into their house. Or I've got a neighbour who's uh, is heating his gas, you know, the the bear, whatever it's called, the boiler um, broke, and because he's elderly, although he doesn't like that word, but he's you know he's an older gentleman. And I contacted the council while he was here with me. And I said, look, I'm contacting them. Because we need to sort this out. Because it's getting cold. And I don't want you to be in there being cold, you know. I lent him my heater. I've got an electric heater that I used to use in my other place where I lived. But I've not had to use it since I lived here. That's but outside of that, I've got no interest. You know, it's sort of. I don't know. This is strange. I tried to explain this to a few people in the past, and I think it almost comes across like I'm 
being rude or like you know just uncaring but I just don't seem to naturally have that individual caringness like personal perhaps I'm just not personable I don't know if that's the right word I like helping people but especially like helping people from a distance which is why I do this I love the idea of helping as many people as I can it gives my life meaning so I'm not completely selfish um, from that perspective I prefer to do this over earning lots of money um, because if I did uh, if I was at work I'd have to I'd have to be earning decent money which means I'd be working a lot of hours and I'd be I'd probably be too knackered to put any energy into this into this sort of stuff that I do you know it's when I go back to work whenever that is I can't just go back to minimum wage I just I need to be earning um a proper salary you know and if I go back into sales maybe I don't know um sort of been looking at it I thought because I've got a friend who's just bought a yacht and they're very very expensive very expensive you know hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars even for uh, not not even like huge yachts I mean they can go up you can spend I think you can spend over a billion dollars on a yacht if you're willing to to do that I don't know but you can spend I think some of these like you know, really, really rich people. I spend hundreds of millions of dollars on yachts. I'm not saying this because I want to buy a yacht, because I don't. I'm saying this because if I sold yachts, if I sold them, I would get a percentage of the commission. I'd get a commission based on a percentage of the price or the sale. And in some places, there'd be like 20, 25% commission. I don't know what it is in Yachtland, but, or should I say Yachtland? So Yachtland, um, I don't know what the you know, commission rate would be. But then I know nothing about yachts. And I saw an advert in the online for it's a car I think it was second hand car place garage where they sell second hand cars or used cars pre loved cars <laughs> and um I thought, yeah, I could sell cars, but I can't drive. Would I need to drive? Are people allowed to go out and do a test drive on their own? I don't know. But I think I could be quite good at that. Apart from the fact I've got zero interest in cars. I know nothing about them. But I'd learn. You know, I'd we all know nothing about lots of things before we know about it, don't we? When you think about it, the a professor of astronomy knew nothing about astronomy at some point. The best violinist in the world couldn't play a single note at one point, couldn't read music at one point in their life. So... You know, I could learn um, all that stuff about cars. 
And I think because I'm so old, <laughs> I'm so so old now. It could be. I could give the impression of trustworthiness. You know, because on the phone, I just sound a lot younger than I am, and I always have done. I mean, you up now. I don't know how old I sound, but I know I don't sound my age. But when I was about 31 doing the insurance sales, I sounded about six years old. Hello, welcome to Churchill Insurance. Uh, um, You'd like a quotation? Oh, okay then. Before I I continue, I have to ask my dad if it's okay. So I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Yeah, I really sounded young. And then I guess I sound older now because I is older. But I wonder what other things I could sell. Houses. But then I don't want to sell if I was gonna go into selling houses. I don't want to just sell a house. I want to sell mansions. I want to sell multi, multi million pound houses where I'll be making, you know, half a million for each sale or something like that. That's what I want. That's not what I want, but that's what I would would want if I was going to get paid. So I'll do something for free. But if I get paid for it, I want to get paid a lot. <laughs> it's, it's strange. What a paradox. It Partly, I think, it's because it's been so long since I actually had any money. Like, you know, an income of... Yeah, it, it just... Has it made me greedy? I don't know. I'm not a greedy person, I don't think. Um, But I do kind of want to be successful in something one day, sometime, at some point, doing something, but I don't know what. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to plod along and make recordings. But there may come a time when I just don't have the time to do these. Because if I go end up working, I'll be getting home and I'm just probably just going to watch telly, you know? Or if I end up having a girlfriend I'm going to want to go out and do social things so yeah this is this is very much a sign of a a single person's occupation in a way running this free service because it means I can do it at weird hours of the day I can have a garden shed in the bedroom can you imagine how well that go down if I was in a relationship Hi, hi, sweetheart. Uh, Just come through to the living room. Don't go in the bedroom yet. There's a surprise in there for you. Yeah. And I bought you some flowers. I bought you some flowers. Do you like them? Um, Do you remember when you said that you always loved me? And that, you you, you know, you were so happy to to finally meet me and you were going to st- you stay with me forever and ever. Do you remember that? And you and you said you didn't even, weren't even that bothered by the farts. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, well what's I going to show you? It's kind of a surprise. 
in a sense of you're really going to be surprised. And, uh, oh, what, well, yeah. You might want to come into the kitchen first and I'll just show you. I thought, you know that space near the washing machine and the radiator that we don't really use? I thought that's a really good place to have a wardrobe. So I brought our wardrobe out of the bedroom and it fitted just perfectly. It's really, really good. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And if you come into the bathroom, the bath is just the right size to fit the set of drawers. So it's really good. So whenever you need a bath, we just have to lift out the, you know, take two of us. Uh, well, just one of you, but you know, I need help to get it out of the bath and, uh, you know, but it's, it's really handy. If you think about it, you get in the bath, have your bath, you get out, you put the set of drawers back in the bath, you know, when the water's out, obviously. Mind you, it is wood, so it will float, I'm guessing. And you dry yourself off, and you've got a nice, fresh pair of underpants there, or underwear, braziers, whatever. Um, I feel like wearing is there so that's really good the wardrobe's in the kitchen set of drawers in the bathroom are you with me so far? yeah okay well let me take you to the storage room or the storage room there's where all the coats are and all the things that we used to have on the hangers or on the wall that's there and let me take you up to the loft that's now where the bed is oh it's really good it's we've made use of a lot of room we I mean you think about it we've thought about what should we do with the loft it's sorted. This is now where the bed goes. We can sleep up here. It's lovely. And when you think about it, really, you always look like the idea of underfloor heating. Well, now we have got that because the heating will be on underneath the loft. It'll be our own underfloor heating. Now that's a fact. Now for the surprise. Let me take you into the bedroom. Close your eyes. Now all I want you to do is, I'm gonna ring you on the phone, on your phone. It's ringing, answer it. Right, I'm just gonna talk to you on the phone. Just before you go in, let me just go out the front door and you can hear me walking down the stairs. Yeah, no, I'm moving quite quickly. You're, you're tr it's right. Now keep your eyes closed and open the front door. Not the front door, the, the bedroom door. Now open your eyes. So, so what do you think? Do you like the garden shed that's in the bedroom now? That's going to be my new recording studio. Hello. You still there? Hello? Hello? No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. Hello? Are you there? Oh. Huh. That's strange. Must be the signal. Yeah, that might not work. So kind of maybe have to stay have to stay I don't know see the my biggest obstacle with having a relationship apart from me you know myself is for me kind of in the past has been the crappy rooms that I've lived in I've lived in some really rotten rooms 
really bad uh, places where I didn't really feel that I could have anyone there or places that were mouldy or just, just you know, not very nice. They've not all been horrible, but they've predominantly not been great. So now I've got a flat, which is, that's a big tick. That's a good thing. But then I've got this little creature running around who likes to let off the odd whiff, the odd smell, the odd, the real, you know. And he also, he likes to destroy things. He likes to get into all kinds of trouble, which he did today. I'll tell you about that later. And he likes to go to the toilet. Usually in the right place, but sometimes he doesn't care. Uh, And sometimes he's asleep, to be fair. He goes to the toilet when he's asleep. He's not like us, we, you know, where you get a little bit of notice. He doesn't get any notice. It's literally, need to go now. And he runs to a corner of the room. Hopefully it's somewhere where there's paper. And he does his, whatever he needs to do. And then he goes back to sleep. He goes, runs back to his bag or wherever he's sleeping. And he's fast asleep. So he doesn't actually wake up. The reason I know this is because sometimes I'll pick him up when he's been to a toilet, only when he's done a wee. <laughs> he's done a little bit of a wee, that's it. And I'll pick him up and I'll put him on my lap and I'll cuddle him. And he'll be fast asleep. And then a few minutes later, he'll wake up and he'll, I'll make him jump. He's suddenly like, Who the hell are you? How did I get here? He's up like, really, because he was asleep got no recollection I mean he must think that he's he's running towards his bag and suddenly he's in his bag or he's dreaming that he's flying or he's in a hot air balloon or something so that's something that I think oh not it's not everybody's favourite thing because he's he's a handful. It's untrainable. He's I tried. I really tried. I mean he's I suppose he's trainable in a sense of he doesn't bite me. Doesn't bite people. And that is his instinct to bite, you know, but he doesn't. So he does know a few words like gentle, um That's the only thing he listens to. He knows other words like stop, no, don't. He he does know those words. But the command that he listens to and actually responds to the most often is Andre, ignore me. Ignore me. Ignore everything I say. And he does. He's really good with that command. Very, very special little boy. Very, very wonderful. And so he's kind of part of the reason, other than obviously myself, he's a, he's a little bit kind of dubious about having someone in my home because at the moment it's really messy that's partly because I've been doing some decorating and um, been doing some like home improvements and things like that so the floor's a little bit dusty and whatever but I've you know it's alright it's not Depends, doesn't it, on people's perceptions about what's tidy and what's not. 
I mean, for me, I'm looking around at how much of it is rubbish, and probably 70 to 80% of what's on the floor are his toys, and the carrier bags are his carrier bags that he likes to play in or sleep in. So it's not really mess, you know, technically. But it is messy. And then... What's the other thing that... So Andre's one of those reasons. The other reason that I'm kind of... I haven't got involved really or haven't like not really sort of for years is lack of money it's expensive to have a relationship you know I don't mean I don't mean thousands of pounds I need every week but I suppose I'm a little bit old fashioned I quite I'm quite a I can be I don't mean, um, it's different ways you can take that, isn't it? Old fashioned, depends how far back you go. But I, 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 I have to have a drink there. I like to, and I know that some people class it as a bit sexy, but I like to pay for stuff. I like, you know, if I go out on a date, <laughs> it's been a heck of a long time. The last time I recall actually going out on a an actual... I suppose the last time I went out on a date would be four four years ago, I suppose. Like actually going out. Yeah. And To be fair, I don't even think I paid for that. So the last time I went out and paid for the mill would have been 2012. Beginning of 2012. I dated a, a lady from... I don't know, somewhere... Should have asked her, shouldn't I? Wonder what her name was. So why is it not Poland, not Bulgaria? Eastern European country. Uh, Transyl. She was from Transylvania. And. She, yeah, so we. I took, well, I took her out. She came out with me on a date and I paid for the meals. We had uh, fish finger, chips and beans. It was nice. And I remember it because there was this lady on another table who I couldn't stop looking at. And I don't know why. Just in tr- not not in a kind of uh, I didn't fall in love with her or anything, but she I think she had the tattoos or something. She was just really. I think it was the tattoos because I'm not into tattoos at all. I say that, but sometimes I see someone with tattoos. I'm like, oh. So I don't find tattoos attractive, but sometimes I really do. 
Isn't it weird? Isn't it strange? I've only got one tattoo. Um, or should I say, tattoo? Some people call it tattoo. Tattoo. I've only got one tat on my body. And I was thinking about getting two tattoos extra or changing the one I've got into looking like Andre. So I might, but I might just, I can't even want to, the one I've got is really rubbish. It's a really crappy tat. It's really bad. And I've had it since I was 16, I think. But it's part of me, it's part of my body, and it's been there for such a long time. So I just, I figure I'll just keep it, you know. There's no point covering it up. It's not like it's a swastika or something, you know. It's it's just a, a dragon. So it's it's not offensive to anybody, other than maybe goats, because goats don't like dragons today, because they eat them. Don't they? So I kind of thought about getting a tattoo of Andre on my arm. And maybe a tattoo of something kind of dedicated to my nan as well. But I just, I'm not really a tattoo person. I don't really... I don't know. Don't, I can't... First of all, then I did not enjoy the process. So that, you know, I didn't... I don't, you know, oh, oh no. So, it's like, oh, why put myself through that? So I probably won't. Mind you, the tattooist, it'll be, it'll be stuck there with me for like an hour. And I can talk to him and bore him or her. Yeah, for a whole hour, I can talk about myself for an hour. Oh, what bliss. And they won't be able, it's like a captive audience. They won't be able to just, won't be able to press the, <laughs> the off button, the pause button. the only thing at the end I'll say I'll tell you what next time you come we'll give you a free tongue tattoo <laughs> just to keep me quiet wonder what you'd have on your tongue if you can have a tattoo on your tongue what would it be what would it say hmm I wonder that's something to think about isn't it just the idea though, of having a prick in your mouth for that long. Because tattoos, they're not quick, are they? So having that prick going in and out of your mouth, in and out of your tongue, with the ink, pushing the ink in, oh, nah, doesn't appeal to me. Oh, sen- well, I was going to say, I've got a sensitive tongue. I think everybody probably has, haven't they? You know, I don't think there's that many people walking around saying, Oh, I can't feel nothing on my tongue. Like rubbing sting and nettles over it. Nothing, see? Yeah, totally calloused. Yeah. That's, that'd be weird. So, so la- what other things were I... Yeah, this is an old song by Cliffy Richard called Bachelor Boy. And I think that's going to be me, you know. I think I'm going to be a bachelor. You know, I want part of what comes with... No pun intended. I want part of what comes with, you know, uh, romantic relationships. But... Yeah, I don't know. I'm all. I've, I don't know. It's all. 
I had a friend tell me years ago, he said, oh, if, if you don't, you got to get with someone, otherwise when you get older you'll be so lonely. Oh, when you get into your 40s, like, really, I'm, I'm not lonely. I'm really not. I just, I don't know. I don't get, I don't really get lonely. You know, when people say, oh, uh, oh, you wouldn't like to... Some people don't like being on their own for like more than 10 minutes. It's like, what, what are you, a puppy? <laughs> are you a little dog, a little puppy? You know, got no concept of time. Oh no, they've gone forever. No, I don't, I don't really have that. I think maybe it's just the way I've grown up. I had three brothers, so if you, I know it's not like a huge family, but it's still, what, one, two, what's it, three, four, five, it's still six people, plus the, the step-grandmother um, being around quite a lot, and, and, my like grandparents being around and cousins and you know so it's you know I didn't get a lot of time to myself uh, growing up and when I was in the children's home I was living in a dorm so I was staying sleeping in the same room as I don't know 12 20 whatever many other boys so if you live in a children's play, a children's home, you'd, you'd, you're always with people. Which, on some level, is nice, I suppose. On another level, if you're... So I don't know, am I introvert or am I extrovert? Because some people would meet me for an hour and think... Now that's an extroverted person. But the reality is, I can only do that for about an hour. With alcohol, I can make it last a little bit longer. Unless I'm in that mood, then I don't need alcohol and I don't need much sleep either. But generally, I'm I'm more introverted. I just can't seem to fit into the cliche of each one. And it's strange. I told you I like talking about myself. 251 hours, pretty much. That'll be at the end of this one. So each recording is about an hour of these Let Me Pull You To Sleep. So I've spent 251 hours talking about myself. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? How many people get a chance to do that? Uninterrupted. And obviously they're, they're interrupted by a few days, you know, because I can't do all 251 hours in a row and I'm guessing no one in the world could but each hour is uninterrupted and that's kind of what I would like out of a relationship just to be able to see I don't want a conversation I want a monologue I just want to talk about myself yeah and that's it <laughs> and I do see I do realise that that's not the ideal situation for everybody but for me it's absolutely perfect but in real life, I know that other people are not interested in what I've got to say. 
about myself. And I learned this years ago because when I was a kid, the only thing I wanted to talk about was whatever I was interested in. Or well, just about me, really. Never being particularly interested in gossip unless it involved me. You know, unless it's something someone said to me, like in an interaction, then, but not just like, oh, he said this about her and the, uh, yeah, but where do I come into it? Well, you don't, I'm just, this is just gossip. I'm just letting you know what someone else said about somebody else. Yeah, but where do I, how does that concern me? Did they mention me? No, they didn't mention you at all. But this is what she said about him. And they used to date, and now he's dating her sister. Okay, let, let me re, re, retrace this. So, he's dating her sister. How am I involved in this? Did, did he mention me? Did her sister? Do I know her sister? How am I... How do I fit into this story? Well, you don't actually fit into the story. What is wrong with you? Everything isn't about you. That's where people make mistakes. It's not all about you. No, it is all about me. And it's all about you. Your life is all about you. My life is all about me. We are the stars of our lives. Everybody else, they're co-stars or just extras. <laughs> you know, we are the main star of the movie. And what a fantastic movie it could have been. <laughs> if only I'd put some effort in. So yeah, I'm not great at gossip. It's like, okay, where... So it's got nothing to do with me, yet you want me to be interested somehow. I can't, I can't. Sometimes hard to pretend, I think. Hard to pretend. I mean, I've actually had conversations. I said this to someone the other day. I've been standing there talking with somebody and I've just completely gone blank because I've, I've got nothing to say to them because I'm not interested in them at all like I just uh, in a kind of I want to know all about you and your past and all about your stuff and I'm happy just to know people to see them, work with them, and just take them for how they are now. I just got no interest in what they did before they met me. Because if it doesn't involve me, it's not important. No, it's not. Well, maybe that's it. I don't know. But it's uh, narcissistic, you say? Okay, if it's not... If you're going to use words like that, spell it. Go on. I never use words I can't spell. That's why I'm very limited. That's why I don't use the word vocabulary. Because I can't spell it. Preposterous. Preposterous. See, still can't say that word. I've been trying all week to say preposterous. Can't say it. I can say prosperous. I can say... Pro, pro, pros, can't do it. Almost like I've got some kind of speech, speech issue with that particular word. I actually tried to say that word during a hypnosis session that I was recording, and I couldn't believe it. 
I had to kind of just flimsy over it because I, you know, after saying trying to say the word three times, I thought, ah, this isn't good. I still can't say it. I wonder why. Apart from all the things I've said, I think I'd make a perfect boyfriend. You know, okay, apart from being inconsiderate, being selfish, being uninterested in others. Um, um, I'll make you laugh. Yeah, if you, that's the one thing that no, any girlfriend I've ever had, they'll say, that's probably the only thing they'll say is that I do make them laugh. But sometimes, specific, well, the first time I get naked normally is the funniest. But for some reason, when I get, um, it's been a long time, kind of, but when I get intimate with someone for the first time, I almost turn into some kind of uh, wacky comedian. And I just, I basically drain any bit of passion that there could be out of it and turn it into some kind of comedy roadshow. And although it's, it's probably enjoyable on one level for the other person, it's probably not hugely romantic. You know, so it's not always the best time to... It's not always the best time to make jokes, actually. And I'm not going to tell you some of the things I've said in the past, but sometimes I've said inappropriate things as a joke, thinking I was going to make them laugh. And uh, let's just say backfired. Yeah. And I had to... Uh, I had to spend the, the next 10 minutes laughing on my own in the bathroom telling myself jokes. So it's been a while <laughs> not since I've done that but it's, a, it's been a while so yeah I think I'm, I might be destined to I don't know it's Oh, not everybody's supposed to sort of get married and have children and do all that stuff, are they? We're all, we're all different. Some people are destined to sit at, sit at home talking into a microphone to themselves and then sticking it on the internet people to listen to you know what's weird though I've got no idea what I would do without the internet because if I'd have been doing this let's say there was no internet I could have made recordings I could have made you know, CDs of myself, DVDs, videos, whatever. But how on earth would I have got an audience? Especially as it's free. So that would have cost me so much money putting adverts in papers to offer a free service, which would be impossible, just wouldn't be practical. And even if I charged, imagine how long it would have took for me to 
to build up the audience that I have now, or that I've had over the last 13, 14 years, to build up, to have that many different people listen to my stuff that I have over the years, like on YouTube and various podcasts and stuff. I don't think, without being famous or without having some kind of backing, you know, from a publishing firm or a record deal or something, it just wouldn't have happened. And if I had a record deal, which is, you know, very unlikely unless you're famous, but if I had got a record deal, they would have put out a few records instead of over a thousand recordings that I've done or 1,150 or whatever it is so I would have kind of just be I'd have been limited I'd have been limited by my own success I'd have been rich well I wouldn't be it depends if it was successful of course but the internet opened up I know it's technically the internet's kind of uh, causing problems in you know uh, real life businesses uh, you know but for people like me it's amazing what people like you who are listening to this is it just opens up a world that wouldn't have been there before I and mean, I, I practiced in 2000 yeah 2000 I practiced and made a little a little recording uh, on a it was at my cousin's and he was really he used to make music he used to produce music so I made this just this audio of me talking doing like a little pretend relaxation session never done it before never expected to ever do it didn't even want to do it you know I didn't really think about it at that time really didn't didn't know I didn't know what I wanted to do with the hypnosis that I'd learned and I've been learning hypnosis since 98 January and although I've been studying it I've gone on courses and NLP and stuff like that I just I was really interested from an academic side and from a a personal side you know to like try some of this stuff out for myself and I knew that Paul McKenna he did a lot of audios I think he was one of the most uh, the best selling hypnosis records ever in the world's history I think and um, and he wrote lots of books with DVDs attached to them and it's still available uh, so he's done loads he's just so successful I mean I don't know what the in America what level of success the top hypnotist in America has but Paul McKenna's worldwide so as far as I'm aware, he's a top hypnotist in the world. But there's going to be other, like I mean, as far as fame goes, it's. Um, but it's going to be others that other people know. I mean, you might, if you're in Australia or Canada, you possibly or very likely got a, a hypnotist who's on television and on the, you know, that does stuff who's much more well known in your country than perhaps Paul McKenna is. 
but that's a very very small market it's a very small field but you know what I did this is I'm going off track um, but it's probably good because I was talking about almost sound like I was trying to record a dating <laughs> some kind of dating uh, recording I was going to upload it to some dating firm well actually I don't like talking I don't like talking about myself I like to be left alone very selfish I don't want to do anything I want everything done for me um, so yeah get in contact you have to be perfect in every way and uh, I'm really not yeah get in contact yeah you have to offer me everything and I offer you nothing in return yeah speak to you soon so yeah that's support McKenna it's a small market well, yeah I was going to say I, in 2000 2000 or was it 1999 I'm not sure about that time maybe 99 I went to the library and they had all the yellow pages for the whole country and the yellow pages was all the business directories for different businesses and each yellow um, pages had a section for hypnotherapists now I went, I can't believe it, it's, it took me quite a long time to do it, but I, I spent a long time, quite a bit of money as well actually, in the library, and I photocopied every single Yellow Pages, like, you know, the section where the hypnotherapists were, for the whole country for that year, you know, or maybe the previous year, wherever they were. Like 98 to 99 or whatever it was and there's a lot of yellow pages there it's all broken up into um, what's, what is it not towns but areas like Essex and Suffolk and Norfolk and London and you know, so it's lots of different um, areas, counties, that's it, counties. And uh, I said that like I've got someone else in a room telling me, but I don't. It's only me, it's just me. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, it's just me. And I photocopied every single yellow pages where the hypnotherapist sections were I got a few questions from the people working in there first of all I wanted to know why you know how come I was hogging up the the photocopy machine because I was getting through so much paper and uh, but I did it and at that time because I added them all up, because it was a big old thing, um, there was about 5,000 hypnotherapists listed in the Yellow Pages in UK. That was in 1999-ish. So about 5,000 hypnotherapists listed in the Yellow Pages. And those were the days when people would get into the Yellow Pages. There was big, thick books, telephone directories, basically, for businesses. And I don't know how much it cost to be in them at that time. Or whether you could even get in there for free, I really don't know. And so... I would suggest that pretty much all most of the hypnotherapists that were working would have been in the yellow pages at that time maybe there was an extra thousand out there that weren't 
nowadays, you know, the Yellow Pages, I think, is gone now. You got Yell.com, which was the the internet version of the Yellow Pages. I think the Yellow Pages might be around, but I don't know where it is. And they charge... You don't charge you to be on Yell.com just to be listed, but it'll just literally be um, your name. Now, kind of be it, maybe a telephone number. But if you actually want an advert, I think they charge for that. Well, they do charge for that. And it's because they charge, and it's not cheap. Less hypnotherapists are on Yell dot com than they used to be in the Yellow Pages because there's lots of websites that have listings of hypnotherapists and I've been on all of them not been on well actually I have been on all of them as well I've paid for some got on some for free in the past and I kind of I know this this area very well and there's a lot more hypnotherapists now than there used to be. You know, I'd say there's got to be at least 20,000 out there. At least 20,000. Which still isn't a lot. When you consider there's estimated 63 million people in the UK of England. So 20,000 is a very tiny percentage of that 63 million. And you may be thinking, what was the point of that story? Well, there wasn't any point. When I, when I um, became, when I first became a counsellor, so in 2009, I gained my diploma in counselling. And in 2010, I got my degree. So the, I was qualified as, a, so it was like a, a double course in a sense. The first two years gave me a diploma, which allowed me to, you know, because it gave me 120 points, which is a diploma. That allowed me to be a counsellor. The, and the next 120 points gave me the um, BA honours. Is it BA or MS? BA? MA? Yeah, BA. Or was it BSC? No, I don't know. BA, I think. And I... I actually had the Yellow Pages person came to my house and sold me a package. It wasn't actually a package on the table, it wasn't a... Well, it looks like sherbet, but I hope it don't taste like sherbet. It wasn't a package. It wasn't, you know, like a Christmas present or anything. He didn't put his package on the table. You know, it wasn't anything weird like that. Basically, he said, here's what we do. Here's what we do. If you have your advert on yell.com, or in the yellow, yeah, yellow pages, yeah, we put it on yell.com for free, for free. I said, oh, okay. And this is, you know, this is the advert for counselling, but I think I also put down hypnos hypnotherapy as well, because, you know, because of the hypnosis stuff that I do. And I said, okay, so how much will that be then? 
he said. On Yale.com for free. I said, yeah, how much will it cost? It's free. I said, no, okay. So the whole thing's free, is it? He said, no. I said, how much is it then? He said, £739 for the year, that's all. £739. And he told me that I was going to get so much business. So many people are going to be seeing my advert. I'll be inundated by phone calls. Non-stop. You have to get yourself a receptionist. You'll be so busy. You'll have to... <laughs> you'll have to clone yourself. In order to see more clients. You'll be so busy. Free. Free. Stop you. You sold it now. And... I think the whole time I was on the yellow pages... I didn't renew it after the first year because I think I had possibly three inquiries. So how much does that work out each inquiry? £739. About £240 each inquiry, something like that. Mind you, at least the uh, getting on the internet was free. So that was alright. But it turned out I could be I could be on the internet for free anyway. So oh, that was uh Yeah, it was a learning experience. Well, it should have been a learning experience, but I don't really know what I learned. I've been trying to rack my brain. That's really weird, you know. I actually was a qualified counsellor over 10 years ago. I think it was about June. 2009 Can you believe that? I've been a qualified counsellor For 10 years It's like, wow I've not been practising For 9 But I, uh, no, I, I did I practised for a few years I've not practiced as a counsellor since 2013, I think. Yeah. So I did it for four years. 2013, April. I think it's when it finished. I was, I had, it was all going really well. The beginning of 2011, I was suddenly getting lots of work, but it was through a charity, and they were paying £25 an hour, and I was self employed, but they gave me, I think I had something like. 16 hours a week guaranteed well not guaranteed but I had 16 slots and when when the the client finished I sometimes had to wait a week a week or two for that slot to be fit, filled but it was pretty much full for you know most of those slots for the whole time plus I had another counselling job which was self-employed uh, again. So I'd have um, sort of money coming in as well for another charity. So I was doing about four hours a week there, five hours, something like that, maybe six even. 
and then I was doing another a few hours private and then it all went a bit willy up so yeah had to the main one went down to about four hours a week from 16 to four it's like what So yeah, it's not weird, 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 weirdy, weirdy, weird. I feel it would have been better if I'd have had the I do sometimes <laughs> think that I'd have been a little bit better off if I'd gone to university and studied something I could use, you know, maybe Sort of come some kind of IT um, it some kind of you know I don't know become a plumber or I mean that's that's a well paid job it's a really good job to have but then I'd need to drive wouldn't I but that's if I was a plumber or uh, a boiler fitter they're just you know they're or electrician you know it's, it's just always in demand don't know if I'd want to be on call all the time though not sure. I don't know. Right. I still had so much to tell you. But I'm going to go. And I'll tell you tomorrow. Or whenever I do the next one. Because I've missed stuff that I wanted to tell you. It involved my television. It involved Andre getting his tail caught in the door. Um, but that's okay. We've sorted that out. I've now sorted the, the doors. So I've got these um, lock and a chain. You know the chain that you have on your door with a lock, you know, and you can open the door up and you can say, who is it? And you can say, no, I don't like you. And you can close the door. Well, I've got one of those. But while it's on the wall attached to the back of the door, on both the living room and the bedroom so the door can't close on its own without me unchaining it it just means that he can't get locked in the door also he can't get his tail caught so he got his tail caught into the you know the, the what is it the bit The, where the door is hinged to the door frame that that side he, the door closed on his tail and he couldn't get out he was like and I thought wow four years I've had him and he's never done that he, I mean I've never known him to do that mind you that could explain why he has very little hair on his tail Perhaps he's always doing it. But I decided never again. It's not going to happen again. So I did. I got me drill out. I got me screwdriver out. And, uh, and these two chains I had on my other door. My old door. And I got a brand new door yesterday. Yeah. Brand new door. And it's one of those ones that. It's proper secure it's got about six locks on the inside it's practically unbreakable so it's like okay I don't need that chain on it and plus it comes with a chain anyway so I thought oh, that's fine so I put these chains on both the living room door behind it on a wall and it attaches to the door and one in the bedroom so Andre can no longer close the door so he's never going to get his tail caught ever again in the door hinge area. 
So I thought I'd deferret, no, not deferret, I thought I'd ferret proof this flat. I'm constantly you know, looking around, making sure that it's safe for him, making sure that it's safe for me. I mean, today I left the table too close to the chair, came in, it knocked loads of stuff onto the floor. Plates, or, you know, that were on the table. He climbed all over the laptop, opened up pages I didn't even know were still stored, which is weird. And it's like, oh, he can't help himself. I think it might be just like, well, I see daddy doing it. So let's have a look what this internet, what's so great about this internet? I see him looking at it. And he's like tapping away. Who knows? He might be emailing his friends. He might be on Facebook. Who knows? <laughs> so, um, this is something came to my mind, but I won't say it. So I'm going to go. So Andre's happy now. I've moved my television lower on the wall. So now I can see it without looking up practically to the ceiling so that's good the light switch or the, the lamp where the light switch is connected to you know the light the light the light bulb where the light bulb goes in the light is falling apart so I had to call the council to get them to help me with that I don't want to touch it because it's you know, just it's a no, no. So, and it's weird because this week the light went out in my bedroom and the light went out in the living room. The bulbs both blood burst or stopped working. The one in the bedroom, when that stopped working, it shorted the whole flat. So I had to go in and turn the, you know, start it all up. So sh you know the the power box it sort of cut, up, cut off all electricity so I'm thinking there's got to be something wrong here because it's just a light bulb what's going on so I'm going to tell the electrician when I see them about that so I had the same thing with my toaster Every time we put, well, not every time, obviously, I would never have used it because I did use it. But it got to the stage where I just tried to turn it on and it short out the whole flat. I have to go in and turn it on and I'd, I'd leave it and then I'd try it again and it'd do it again. So I ended up chucking the toaster out. But I think it might be the plugs. Because one of my neighbours had to have his whole flat rewired. So maybe this, you know, it's a very old building. This is like, I think, late 40s, maybe 50s, this was built. So it's fairly... I wonder how many people have lived here. I only know of two. The last two neighbours. Because one of my neighbours has been there about 25 years. Or since about 1989 or something, I don't know. And he told me about two of the neighbours. But uh, I wonder how many people have been here since the very start. You know, like someone that moved in here when it was a new build, when it was, it was just like all new. But then it's going to be all new for everybody, isn't it? Whoever moves in here is like, oh, it's in my new home. And I keep trying to get back to that feeling. That feeling of gratitude. Of having somewhere to live. That is for life. You know. It's a council flat. It's mine for as long as I want it. And. I don't always have that feeling of gratitude. No, I'd like. I try and get hold of it. I try and embrace it and caress it and kiss it you know like I want that feeling 
to feel grateful, to feel appreciative of what I have, how lucky I am to have this place, and how long I waited for it, to eventually have a place that I can call home. And yeah, I don't own it. I could buy it. Well, I can't buy it because I've got no money, but I could I get it. I could buy it at a big discount. Probably 40% discount. I could probably to purchase the place. But it's my home. My and Andre's. Me and Andre's home. And I've been trying to get in touch with that side of things, you know, the positivity, but not fake positivity, but real positivity, feeling grateful for real things, something that really is good, something that really is something to be grateful for, you know, whether it's good health, whether it's, I mean, things like having an appetite is a great thing. Maybe not if you're like 500 pounds, but but even then having an appetite is, it's a, it's a sign of health. Obviously too much of an appetite, it's like anything, isn't it? It's just, I, I, I have an appetite sometimes, but I don't eat much. You look at me, you probably think that I did eat a lot, perhaps, but I don't. I don't eat much. I very, I have small meals. I eat fourteen times a day, but I have very small, very tiny meals. No, I don't. I, I just don't eat much. Just I never have really been a big eater. Apart from when I'm hungry. But even then it's like, it really is eyes bigger than your tummy. But I can't say that now, obviously. I mean, no one's eyes are bigger than, you know, dinosaur's eyes wouldn't be bigger than my tummy. So, it's, but that kind of, oh, I want that, like that greed, like, I want to eat all of that up. And then realise, I can't. But it's nice. Still nice. And I've got no idea what... Oh yeah. Gratitude. So yeah. Now I'm just... Trying to get in touch with... Things to feel grateful for. I mean tonight... I went... I went for a walk with my friend. And... We were just chatting about the weather because we're English and that's English. It's an English person's favourite subject, the weather. And we were talking about, you know, the temperature. And, and I was just feeling appreciative to how mild it was. Because last night, or well, the night before, at around the same kind of time, it was fairly colder both needed gloves or wore gloves I don't know if I needed gloves but I wore gloves and I didn't feel that much of a requirement for clothing my hands this evening, so yeah, I think generally it worked out okay. It was nice, just nice, you know. Sometimes it's nice just to notice something that is, it wouldn't normally be classed as pleasant, but actually in the moment is quite nice 
Oh, it's, there's a nice little breeze. But it's fresh. It's not cold. It's fresh. I would have loved this nice little breeze on the 24th of May when it was really hot. But it's okay. I'll settle for the beginning of November. It's ever so nice. So yeah, just the little things. So anyway, I've talked for much longer than I normally do. Nearly an hour and a half, in fact. So I'm going to go. And I wish you all happiness. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Speak soon.